In this video, I want to demonstrate how to compute the expected value for a game of roulette. And I like the game of roulette for this kind of example because it's a simple game of just two outcomes, win or lose. And there's some interesting variations in how you can bet in roulette. Let's take a look at the example. So in this game of roulette, a player places a $6 bet on a single number, and the player has a 1 over 38 probability of winning. If the ball lands on the player's number, the player gets to keep the $6 and is awarded an additional $210. So the $6 is the wager and the $210 would be the player's winnings if the player's number comes up. Um, otherwise, if the ball lands on a number other than the player's number, the player's awarded nothing and the casino keeps the player's wager. So the two questions we want to answer is, what is the expected value of the game to the player? And if you play the game a thousand times, how much would you expect to lose? Um, so how, how I compute expected value in examples like this is to set up a table. The first column of my table would be just to identify what the outcomes are. And there are two outcomes. The player could win or the player could lose. Now each outcome has a value to the player. Um, the value of winning to the player is the $210 in this particular situation, and the value of losing is a loss of $6. So you want to denote that with a negative sign. The third column will be the probabilities associated with each outcome. The probability of winning is 1 over 38, and the probability of losing is 37 over 38. Now my fourth column is the product x times p of x. So what I'm going to do is multiply, multiply across each row. So 210 times 1 over 38 gives me a value of 5.526321 and, no, pardon me, 32632. Okay, we're going out to five decimal places on this and then for the second row, negative 6 times 37 over 38 gives me a value of negative 5.84211. Now what I'm going to do with that fourth column is to add those values. And when I add those two values, you can see one's positive, one's negative. Uh, what I'm going to get is negative 0.31579. Okay, now keep in mind, our values in the column for x were in dollars, so the units on this quantity are also in dollars. Um, the expected value of the game to the player would then be, if I round it to the nearest cent, uh, negative 32 cents. Or if you had to enter it uh, as a dollar value, you would put it in as uh, negative 0. 3-2, depending on, on how the question was asking you to format your answer. Okay. Uh, it's negative, of course, because casino games, um, the house always has an advantage, right? And there's the advantage that you see. And they, they choose their payouts uh, by doing a, a similar computation, looking at the probability of winning, so that the casino always has that slight advantage. Now let's take a look at the second question. What happens if you play the game a thousand times? How much would you expect to lose? So what I'm going to do is take my uh, expected value out to five decimal places and I'm going to multiply that by a thousand. When I do that, what I'm going to get is a negative $315.79. And what that means is uh, if you walk into the casino and you play a thousand times, um, on average, uh, a player who does that is going to walk out 300 and, about $316 poorer than when they started. Again, there's that, that casino advantage. Um, the only other thing I'll point out is uh, as you're setting up your table, um, your probabilities, this column, those values should always add up to one. Okay, um, watch for the negative sign in the loss situation and that should do it. Uh, some of the variations you might see would be uh, the different kinds of bets. This is a single number bet example. If for example you had a two number bet, uh, the probability 
for betting on two numbers would be two over 38, and then the payout would be slightly less to compensate for the, uh, the increased risk or increased probability of winning. Likewise, a four number square, when you put the chip in the middle of a, a square of four numbers, your probability of winning would be, let's say, four over 38, and then the payout in that case would again be uh, commensurately lower in that situation. So those are some of the variations you might see for this kind of problem, but all you have to do is set up the table in the same way that I just showed you uh, and go through the same steps. Um, well, whenever possible, when you're computing the x over p of x values is to uh, either do this computation in one step so you can minimize round off error or carry your values out to five or six decimal places before you add them. Okay, thanks for watching.